Now we'll take you to Melbourne where the Shadow Attorney General Mark Dreyfus has been speaking. Let's take a listen in. It's now clear from other documents which have been written about the media that Peter Dutton must be referred to the High Court of Australia. His eligibility to sit in Parliament is completely in doubt and it's not simply me saying it. A whole range of constitutional experts have said that only the High Court can resolve the doubt that remains over Mr Dutton's eligibility to sit in the Federal Parliament. It's a matter of tremendous concern, obviously, because Mr Dutton is a senior minister. His eligibility to sit in Parliament, if he is ineligible, will affect the validity of thousands of decisions that he has made as Immigration Minister, as Minister for Home Affairs. It's a significant matter also because this is a government that is hanging by a thread to control of the House of Representatives. It's a government that is governing with a one-seat majority. It's extremely significant that it's one of its most senior members, Peter Dutton, is quite probably ineligible to sit in the Parliament and the advice that was obtained from the Solicitor General uh, does not clear this up. The Solicitor General himself made it clear that the matter remains in doubt, that the state of the law is such that only the High Court of Australia can determine conclusively uh, whether or not Peter Dutton is eligible to remain in the Parliament. Uh, Labor says that Peter Dutton should be referred to the High Court of Australia because the High Court of Australia needs to resolve the question of his eligibility. Any questions? Mr Dreyfus, can you just explain, I guess, to the, um, the non-constitutional lawyers here, in simple terms, how this agreement for the special needs teacher differs from the childcare subsidies that the Solicitor General, Mr Dutton's lawyers, have said don't put him in breach of Section 24? How is this different? Uh, without wanting to be too technical about it, the prohibition in the Constitution is directed at making sure that there are no conflicts of interest between members of parliament in carrying out their duties as members of parliament and their private interests. What has occurred here is that Mr Dutton has an interest in two childcare centres and one of the questions that the several legal advices and the several comment pieces that have been written about his eligibility uh, have referred to is whether or not the participation of childcare centres in receiving millions of dollars of Commonwealth funds uh, was in fact a breach of section 44 of the Constitution. Uh, this further document that's come to light uh, makes it clear that there is an agreement between Mr Dutton's childcare centres and the Commonwealth uh, and that's why there is, uh, we think it's clear, a breach of section 44 of the Constitution. So that's the particular point. Uh, it's about whether or not the Constitution refers to uh, an agreement uh, with the public service of the Commonwealth. What's now come to light is something that on uh, any view uh, is an agreement with the public service of the Commonwealth. Section 44 aside though, I mean, wouldn't you agree that Child Care Centre's done the right thing by employing this special needs teacher and now, I guess Labor's saying, you're demanding Mr Dutton be kicked out because of this. Do you think the public would buy that as the reason? Oh, I don't think that we're even going to the question of what the purpose of the Commonwealth funds is. Uh, the prohibition on the co in the Constitution is absolutely clear. If Mr Dutton, as a Member of Parliament, has a direct or indirect interest, uh, then he is in a contract with the Commonwealth, then he is ineligible. Um, going back to the Day case, which is what's really created the uncertainty in the law and has opened the possibility uh, of Mr Dutton being ineligible, the Day case was about the provision of an electorate office for Senator Day. Uh, every Senator, every Member of Parliament needs to have an electorate office, so no one's doubting that there's some uh, benefit to the Commonwealth in that expenditure. But that wasn't the question. The question was whether or not Mr Day had an indirect or direct pecuniary interest. The High Court said he did and therefore he wasn't eligible to sit in Parliament. And it's, it's that question uh, which needs to be resolved by the High Court in relation to Mr Dutton. Can you honestly say though, if this was a Labor MP facing these accusations, you'd be asking for a similar, I guess, referral to the High Court? Uh, we've made it absolutely clear that where there is doubt about the eligibility of any Member of Parliament to sit 
in Parliament uh, because they have or may have breached section 44 of the Constitution, uh, then that matter should be determined by the High Court of Australia. And that's been a very consistent position that Labor has had. It's also been a consistent position uh, from the former Prime Minister, Mr Turnbull, who said uh, in absolutely direct terms that it should not matter uh, from which party uh, the member concerned comes. Uh, if there's a doubt about their eligibility to sit in Parliament, then uh, they should be referred to the High Court. Regrettably, uh, the current Prime Minister, Mr Morrison, uh, seems to be wanting to protect Mr Dutton in some way. Uh, I think we're in no doubt about who's calling the shots in this government. It's probably not Mr Morrison, it's Mr Dutton and perhaps Mr Abbott. We've got a section here in the Constitution uh, which Peter Dutton, the, a very senior minister in this government, seems to be in breach of. Uh, whether or not there needs to be change to section 44, be it the citizenship section or these conflict of interest provisions, uh, that's a question for another day. Right now, the Constitution must be complied with. Um, so will you be uh, breaking the tradition of doing a partisan referral? Do you have the numbers for that? No, I don't think it's a matter of breaking with tradition. The House of Representatives uh, is entitled under the Constitution to refer any of its members to the uh, High Court of Australia, sitting as the Court of Disputed Returns, to resolve questions of eligibility to sit in Parliament. Under the arrangement that was come to between the parties last year, at the time that there was a disclosure regime set up for the purposes of uh, the citizenship concerns, uh, it was agreed that um, on our side the manager of opposition business could, could refer or put a referral motion to the House uh, of any member whose eligibility is in doubt. Uh, we did that in the last sitting week. Regrettably, uh, the government used its numbers to uh, vote to produce a result that by 69 to 68 uh, the House uh, refused to refer Peter Dutton to the High Court of Australia. But now, uh, for these further questions having arisen, we think it's beyond doubt that Peter Dutton needs to be referred to the High Court of Australia so that his eligibility can be determined once and for all. Excellent. Thanks very much. OK, so that was from Melbourne. Labor's Mark Dreyfus speaking a short time ago there, calling for Peter Dutton to be referred to the High Court over his interests in some childcare centres and uh, possible contra contravention of the Constitution.